Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and in today's video we're going to look at a force field analysis which is a tool that businesses can use during times of change. So the force field analysis was developed by Kurt Lewin and it helps managers comprehend the different forces that come into play during periods of change. And so Lewin found that there are two types of forces at work in any change process. There's the driving forces, which are pushing and supporting the business towards its proposed change. And there are the restraining forces, which are working against the proposed change and trying to keep the business in its current state. And so the equilibrium of those forces can be really instrumental in determining whether a change is going to be implemented successfully or not. And what he found was that the strength of the driving forces needed to outweigh the strength of the restraining forces. And if that happens, then it gives the business a greater chance of implementing change successfully. So when conducting a force field analysis, there's a few critical steps that managers need to take. So once the change has been identified and they're clear on what the change is, the first step is to identify what the driving and restraining forces are. And so that allows them to understand which elements are in favor of their plan or of the proposed change and which ones actually pose hurdles for the business. Subsequently, each force would then be assigned a numerical weighting ranging from one to five. And so the number indicates the influence or the strength of each force. And a score of five would represent a substantial force, so one that's going to be a significant supporter or one that's going to cause significant issues for the business as they go through change, while a score of one would suggest a relatively weaker one. And so it's important to allocate these weightings because it's not the number of forces driving or restraining that's important necessarily. It's the strength of each of those forces, as we mentioned before, that will help determine the success of implementing the change. After weighting these forces, the top three to five should then be ranked to try and identify what the key drivers and the key resistors of the change will actually be. And so doing that equips the management with a really clear view of the challenges they might face during the implementation of the change, which can help facilitate a more informed decision-making process on whether the change is actually worth investing in. Once this analysis of the weighting and the ranking has been done, it's time to create a response in the form of an action plan. And so the goal here is to develop a set of actions that can actually reduce the strength of the restraining forces and if possible, even strengthen the, the driving forces to give the change a greater chance of success. And following the implementation of the action plan, managers should then look to evaluate its effectiveness and adjust as needed. And so what that then does is hopefully demonstrates that the restraining forces have been weakened, giving the change a greater chance of success. So let's have a look at an example to see this in action. So let's consider a recent change implemented by Netflix, which was the launch of their more affordable subscription plan, which features advertisements. So before the, any change was implemented, the business is in status quo, meaning that it's remaining in its current state. And so by conducting a force field analysis, in order for change to occur, we want to, the business wants to disrupt that status quo and create or have driving forces that are outweighing restraining forces and pushing it towards its new desired state. So the first step in conducting a force field analysis would be to identify the driving and restraining forces. And so examples of driving forces for Netflix in this instance could be that there's a potential to attract more customers due to the lower price, especially amidst the rising living costs in many countries. And so this could make Netflix more accessible to those who previously couldn't afford a Netflix subscription. And so a new plan also enables the company to generate advertising income from advertisers and could potentially reduce password sharing, which has been an issue for it since its inception. And so these driving forces would be working to push the business towards the change and away from the status quo. And examples of restraining forces could include that the current customers shift towards the cheaper plan, thereby causing a loss of revenue because they're moving from a more expensive plan to a cheaper plan. There could also be a significant cost of implementing the new plan in terms of employee involvement and technology upgrades. And there may also be competition entering a similar market, which we have seen with Disney and Binge offering customers a similar subscription plan. So that may work against the change. And so these forces look at keeping Netflix in the status quo or what we would deem to be its current state. They're working against the proposed change. Now, after identifying these forces, we need to assign weightings to them. We're going to do so in a hypothetical manner here. So as you can see, there's some numbers allocated or weightings allocated to each of those forces. The attracting more customers and generating advertising income are a three. 
Whereas the more significant ones on the other side are the current customers changing to the cheaper option, that loss of potential revenue, as well as the cost of implementation awaiting as a four. And so this scenario suggests that a challenging pathway for the change, because as you can see, the total of the weightings or the strength of the driving forces is an eight, while the strength of the restraining forces is an 11. So it's important to note that it's not the number of driving forces, as we mentioned before, not the number of driving and restraining forces that's identified, but the overall weighting of or strength of the forces that's important. However, the next step is to formulate a response in the form of an action plan and then acting on it. And hopefully the landscape can shift. And so Netflix may look to see that, all right, these are the ones, the ones we've got circled here. These are the forces that we're going to attack in this action plan. And so Netflix may be able to partner with Microsoft to try and manage the advertisement section, which may reduce the implementation costs. Additionally, they might design offers to make the more expensive options more attractive so that customers remain on their current plan rather than downgrading to a cheaper plan. And they may be able to focus on how they market the new offer to new subscribers and, and therefore attract more, more new customers, uh, increasing revenues, but also increasing their ability to generate more advertising income due to the increased viewer base. And once that action plan has taken place, it's important to evaluate that response. And so as you can see here, we've got an increase in the weighting or the strength of the driving forces and a decrease in the strength of the restraining forces, which improves the chances of successful change being implemented. And so as you can see in this example, the weighting has shifted in favor of the driving forces, and that gives Netflix a greater chance of disrupting the status quo, so that current state that they're in, and pushing the business towards successful change. Now, conducting a force field analysis does have some benefits. So it does provide a really clear plan for the managers because it's outlining those forces for and against the change. And it also generates an action plan that can minimize the impact of those restraining forces and help managers decide whether change is actually worth pursuing and investing resources into. However, it is important to note that the process is subjective and the forces that are identified as well as the weightings that are assigned to them are subjective and could differ based on the individual or team performing the analysis. And also because of that, there could be forces that are arise during the implementation of the change that weren't necessarily identified in the force field analysis process. Also, the focus is often on the current state of the business, not necessarily its future state and what it will be like once it's implementing change. And additionally, to perform a comprehensive force field analysis does require time and resources, which can pose additional costs to the business. So just to recap, a force field analysis is a really powerful tool that managers can use during periods of change. So it involves that identification and analysis of the driving and restraining forces that are going to be working for and against the change. And also by providing those forces a weighting and ranking them, management can focus on those most influential forces. And they can then develop the action plan to try and try and reduce or mitigate those restraining forces and bolster the driving forces, really helping the change or giving the change a greater chance of success. So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next two videos, we're going to go into specific driving and restraining forces that are listed in our study design that businesses can be faced with. Can't wait to see you then, but until then, just remember that for questions, activities, and helping your VCE journey, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.